Well, everyone, we're here today on another special spotlight episode of Best of the Worst, and we're going to talk about one of our favorite films of all time. Uh, Jack, I believe this was your first time watching Suburban I, I, Sasquatch. Maybe I've seen bits and pieces here and there, but this was my first full viewing. And we discovered Suburban Sasquatch originally on the, the esteemed Pendulum Pictures release, uh, six movies, Depraved Degenerates. About Pendulum Pictures is uh, a company that buys the cheapest bottom of the barrel shot on video stuff and just threw them on DVDs. Yes. Yeah. So you could say like six movies for five bucks or whatever it was and they're all garbage. As you can tell by all of the, the stills from the film they include on the back of the box. <laughs> They, they really want to show off what's available on this disc. Yeah. Um, and this, this is from the little little window in time when the, the movie packs on DVD were a thing, where you get them at Walmart and the bin yeah. or wherever. And you say, six movies, what a value. Yeah, and, and grandpas and dads all over the, the world were tricked. <laughs> but we love Suburban Sasquatch so much, we got the official release. Yeah. Uh, at some point, the ownership passed hands because this is released by Brain Damage Films, the famous Brain Damage Films. That must have cost them a pretty penny. <laughs> <laughs> like like a one really pretty penny. <laughs> oh, literally. <laughs> Let's do a let's do a quick rundown of the plot of Suburban Sasquatch. Uh, well, Suburban Sasquatch is about a Sasquatch that shows up in the suburbs, and a Native American woman. I shouldn't put woman in quotes, but Native American woman that has to hunt down the Sasquatch. <laughs> with the help of a reporter who's not really a reporter, he wants to be a reporter but nobody will pay for his shitty articles. He's an amateur reporter who wants to win the, the Pulitzer? The Pulitzer. 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 I've Pulitzer. said it right. Fine, I'm sorry. It's just that you're my best shot at a Pulitzer. And he, uh, his office is the high school, uh, but we know it is a high school because in the first scene that takes place there, you can see people practicing football. <laughs> but all I need is this break. Just a few bucks to start my writing. If I can prove this corrupt police force is covering up murders, well, it could be my big chance. It, it could be my breakout piece. He, he comes there to ask him for money even though he hasn't written anything yet? Yep. Does he have any idea how jobs work? He's a loser. <laughs> he can only afford one shirt, and it's too large. He has a giant shirt, <laughs> and he sleeps on a mattress and box spring on the floor in, in Grandma's bedroom. <laughs> Uh, he's got his computer there, his, his whole setup is, is, is in this uh, spare bedroom in Grandma's house. Yes. And he, he's a virgin. <laughs> we can, now you're just writing your own fan I am. We yeah. can only assume. Just, that's just some logical deductions. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right this, this man has not changed his shirt. How many days go by in this movie? Like a That's um, a very good question, months? Chris. <laughs> Look, it's a pipe dream. You'll have no future. What will you do when you're 70? Still run around investigating small but somewhat interesting stories? Well, he does have the scene with the adult baby where he talks about how he can't get women. <laughs> <laughs> At the fancy restaurant. They somehow got a table before they opened. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's an old man with reverse progeria. He has a baby head, it's well, crazy. We, we should say before we continue, we've seen Suburban Sasquatch probably six, seven times at this point. This is your first time seeing it. So we got some nice uh, new uh, reactions. But even though we've seen it so many times, we were still laughing quite a bit. Yeah. Like this movie holds up. <laughs> hey, stop farting around. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> and he killed him! He's dead? He killed him! He threw it so hard! He threw it such farts! <laughs> Shattered his entire chest cavity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 
Why? Why did he feed the guy to himself? He's a savage Bigfoot, Jack. It's apparently, it is. It is so bad and so stupid. And so charming. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the magical thing about it, and the very, very important thing that makes Suburban Sasquatch work, is that it's a movie that they took seriously making. Right. It comes off like a movie you would intentionally make a bad movie. Uh, but, as we discovered <laughs> watching the outtakes... <laughs> the director is not a 17-year-old. Hi, I'm Dave Wascavage, and welcome to the documentary, The Making of Suburban Sasquatch. What I've gotten done so far is I've met with Sarah Schneider. She's going to be the costume designer. She's going to design and work on the Bigfoot costume. We met this morning, talked about different materials, the fur material bought. The director is not a high school kid. <laughs> that is the most shocking thing. Yeah. We, we, we saw the high school, you know? Yeah. We had evidence of a high school. Oh, this is some kids making this. Mm -hmm. No. No. It's a, that's, it's a, that's a, just where the director cleans the toilets oh, at that high school. He's a janitor. He's a janitor at the high school. Uh, the, ja the janitor. The director janitor. <laughs> Can we just call him the janitor? <laughs> the, the janitor. His name is David Miscarriage. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Jay, you don't, you Miscavige? Waskovich. Waskovich. Oh, where is the concept I have behind Suburban Sasquatch is really going to be more than just a horror film. I'd like this to have a bit of a statement about life and uh, humanity's pressing onward into nature. Uh, Dave Waskovich, Waskovich, uh, that Waskley Waskovich, that Waskley Waskovich. <laughs> <laughs> the director janitor is a middle-aged man from Pennsylvania. Again, uh, Pennsylvania. The Pennsylvania theory uh, holds true. <laughs> uh, and he, he is 100% serious unless this is the most elaborate Andy Kaufman-esque prank. You know, we tend to see things as human beings going out and changing the world, discovering things, but here is something that's basically not only discovering us, but wants to put an influence and a change on us. Let's face it, we only have nature left is the only thing that can make any difference in what we, what, what I'd like to do... This isn't just Killer Bigfoot is a creature in the woods. He's a mystical creature. The, the deep story, the lore, mm -hmm. if you will, of suburban Sasquatch. Yes, yeah. yes. Because he's not just a regular Sasquatch. Because, uh, really, you would just shoot him to death. <laughs> but yeah, he had, there's a mystical quality to him. Rich? Uh, this Sasquatch is a force of nature. and. And, and mankind, the suburbs, are now encroaching upon nature. That's a big theme, is man's uh, overdevelopment and then, destruction of nature. And then our Native American who represents nature has to fight nature to does. stop nature <laughs> from fighting the suburbs. Oh. Wait. <laughs> Wait. Wait a minute. Uh, apparently, he he was on the third draft of this treatment script. Yes, yes. Uh, at the time of filming a pre-production blog. Today is January 29th, 2003, and I'll give you a little status update. Started writing the treatment and the outline for the script back in mid-December. Just completed the first version early January, and I just completed version two this morning. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know. where he's sitting on his grandma's couch. <laughs> uh, it, it looks like like the confessional tape of someone like admitting to murders. Right. <laughs> just <laughs> off camera is a lamp made from a face. Just, <laughs> you just set the camera down, and his head's cut off at the top. And I want to talk about why I did what I did. <laughs> <laughs> I made suburban Sasquatch. Uh, no, yeah, it's it's disturbing. Uh, it's shocking. <laughs> I mean, I wish we had filmed ourselves watching his his video, be, yes, his yeah. behind the scenes stuff, because he he's taking this all seriously, and it's the end product is amazing. Yeah. The important thing about Suburban Sasquatch is the layers of incompetence. <laughs> in in the first. 
five minutes. I, I was going to say the opening is like a thesis statement for the rest of the film. Ah, it's beautiful. <laughs> I mean, there's so much to talk about. We're just going to break down the first scene. Okay. Analysis mm -hmm. of the first scene. <laughs> Uh, we open day for night. Boom. Right off the bat. Oh, wrong. Spooky woods at night. Okay. A, a couple is driving. Uh, we hear them talk. Then it's bad. Well, the whole point is to get away from the city. I know, but still, it's just it's so fun. Man, I really don't feel like going. Barely even seems worth it anymore. They're talking about going to a party or something. The acting is atrocious. And then we see outside the window. Oh, well, I mean, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. We speculated, I think you said it, that he's walking alongside the car. <laughs> you can see the camera bob along with his footsteps. That's why they're going so slow. You can yeah. see, clearly see out the window that they're going one mile an hour. <laughs> uh, he didn't think the audience would notice. <laughs> um, you really have to go all the way out there for a party. It's just so fun. Man, I really don't feel like going. Barely even seems worth it anymore. I don't feel like going all the way out there for a darn party. I just don't want to go. Well, I mean, it's going to be fine. Don't worry about it. Do you remember when we filmed The Recovered, Jay? Oh, yeah. I you, built a little rig. Jay took two pieces of wood and made a, made a like V shape. Like a little shape. triangle shape, yeah. And then we glued or we drilled the camera to it. Yeah. Braced it in the window. Done. And took, it's completely smooth. Took five minutes. It's the best thing about the movie. But so his idea is drive one mile an hour and I'll walk along with the car. <laughs> and somehow that will simulate driving. Yeah. Uh, so you have that, then you have their acting, you have the day for night, and then, and then of course, the attack scene. Oh no! <laughs> oh no! Good <laughs> Bones start flying. No, no blood or gore on them, just bones. Like he had them with him separately and threw them in the air. Yeah. Is glorious. So amidst the context of the story and the subplots that I have going on and what characters are going through their transitions, I have this this creature, this seeming uh, seemingly force of nature that, that can cause so much havoc. And it's a good example to explain to the audience here who has not seen this film, the translation. Like, you're talking about, there's a rubber hand that you get at the Halloween store. Mm, he makes uh, good use of that rubber hand. You see it a lot. Um, there's, there's some bones, some plastic bones, and they just throw them on the floor, and then they film it. And, <laughs> but he would be like, so I had my makeup technician, <laughs> my special effects supervisor, prepare the prosthetics for the sequence. You know what I mean? Yeah. He would talk about it like he's heard filmmakers talk about movies mm -hmm. on commentary tracks when really it's a rubber hand from a Halloween store yeah. that they threw on the ground. What if he paid somebody like a special effects person? He gave him a bunch of money and they were just like laughing behind his back because they're like, we just bought this rubber hand at a Halloween oh, store. This is great craftsmanship. Yeah. Such, such great craftsmanship you did on this, this rubber hand. I see you went all the way to China to make it. <laughs> those, those Tibetan craftsmen. <laughs> so we get our, our, our intro, like our, our, uh, our entree. No, not our, uh, our hors d'oeuvre. Our appetizer, yeah. Our, hors d'oeuvres? Uh, Are you trying to say hors d'oeuvres? Hors d'oeuvres. Okay. Every scene in this movie is a full course fucking meal. <laughs> well, every, well, we, get, we get a little taste of the movie to come. Yeah. And then the police officers show up. Rick, you up? Another one for you. That's a cop. Well, I noticed that that was a cop. That's his uniform. <laughs> I could tell it was a cop because he had brown pieces of tape on his shirt, you see? <laughs> Can we point out just every little thing that's wrong with those outfits? <laughs> yes. Every, every little thing. I think it's really important because there is so much wrong with those police out outfits. It, it, that, that to me is, is like number one. They sell policemen costumes that you can wear for Halloween. Yes. But why do that when you got some brown tape lying around? <laughs> just, just take a dresser and slap some brown tape on it. Not just, not just the shirt. The you know, ties, too. The, the ties. There is no badge. 
No badge on the shirt. There's a thing on the hat, a little uh, tinfoil. There's a uh, paper mache hat that's black <laughs> that does not match the color of the shirt. And it's got a cheaply painted, like that silver spray paint on like a dollar store badge <laughs> that says like police force. And Officer and Policeman. They're always physically carrying their guns because there is no belt. No belt, no holster. <laughs> their, uh, uh, their handcuffs are just through one of they're the going, belt loops. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, okay, the, the shirts. I don't want to talk about our movies. I, I, I will again, though, because our movies are terrible. <laughs> <laughs> so when it came time to have cops and space cop, yeah. went online, ordered some police shirts, got a belt at the Army surplus store, uh, found Milwaukee police badges through eBay. Uh, you know, just basic steps yeah. that are just like so common sense. Like, how could you screw up police costumes so badly unless it was intentional? <laughs> like, it's just like, okay, here is a picture of what a cop looks like. <laughs> you know? Even the little, like, even the little radio things, like oh, cops yeah. got the little things they talk into, right? Yeah. You can buy those. No, you just turn around and you talk to your fax machine. Ma'am, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it used to be the further you were from the city. So Why do they have caution tape in between? Like it's not surrounding the whole area? It's, 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 it's two a, different crime scenes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so now we've made it through the opening scene and the cop uniforms. But but that's like that is the whole thing. It starts it starts so poorly. Yeah. Oh, everything, every, is everything is wrong. Every aspect of the movie is wrong. The, the disappearing body. <laughs> Their shirts are so fresh. They're... Where's the dude's body? Wasn't oh, it on the driver's no. side? It was. Yeah. Their hand's still there. Those two actors had to leave. Yeah, they filmed that at a different time. Mm. Oh. The, the head that oh, magically yeah. grows back after Bigfoot crushes the head? <laughs> <laughs> There's a, there's a bit of a repetition to it, which is the Sasquatch shows up, he, he causes some trouble, he rips off some arms, and then the, the Indian woman shows up and shoots at him with her, her CGI arrows and causes the uh, uh, blood fountain, CG blood fountain she, to come she out of him. She might be actually Indian, like Pakistani. Like, we don't know. No, her, name, her last name's Sanchez. I think she's Hispanic. <laughs> <laughs> no, she is. Of course! She just looked Indian and exotic, so... No, she's so Mexican. I mean, her name is Sanchez. Well, her her uh, her grandfather is Italian. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's wearing like a bathrobe. He looks like um, I love this movie. he looks just like Paul Servino, and he sounds like him too. So he's clearly Italian. The honor of the tribe rests with you. Go now. The Italian Native American chief and his Mexican daughter. <laughs> they they sit in the middle of someone's freshly mowed lawn. <laughs> There, there's a couple of sticks, oh, and some, he used some like lighter fluid to make to light several sticks. Yeah, which which is a, a big roaring campfire that a Native American would have. Yeah. It's like five sticks in someone's lawn. Well, she has an uh, authentic Native American teepee as well. Is a bear intelligent? Can a gorilla be a magical creature? It's so incredibly lazy and incompetent. Yeah, that's what makes it magical. They could she they could not have her shoot a real arrow for some reason. We should. You brought up the, the CGI arrows, and, and she does have CGI hatchets too. That she throws, even though and she the, throws at the CGI log. The hatchets. Wait a minute. If the arrow, if the arrow hit him in the heart, then that's that's his Achilles heel to kill him. Why would she throw hatchets at him? That doesn't make any sense, does it, Rich? <laughs> This doesn't make any sense. Um, this is Dave Wascavage, and I'd like to welcome you to the computer-generated imagery of Suburban Sasquatch. The first sequence done was the moon and trees, which was in the introduction of the credits. And the first thing that's necessary to be done is to take a frame model look, which is a wireframe model of the moon and the sky. Oh, uh, but but okay, there, uh, in the behind the scenes, there's a little like tu tutorial or, or explanation of how he, he created the moon in CGI and his trees. And the bird, too. The biggest challenge with CG modeling comes with the motion to make it look as natural as possible. He, he actually modeled and animated the CGI in it when really, like, we're sitting there watching it. It we're looks like, like plugins. These yeah. are some kind of, like, cheap plugins from a program. But really, that just makes it that much more interesting. <laughs> he, he 
<laughs> he modeled and created the CGI in this film. All right. Good job, boy. <laughs> <laughs> they put a cartoon net on it and it's wiggling for no reason. It's, it's the breeze, Jay. Is that what that the logic is? Yes, yes. Yeah. He had faith in this movie. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> he, had, he, he had faith in the integrity of his artistic vision. Well, he also talks about the uh, the opening shots, the opening credits, which yeah. are all like 3D CG trees yeah, and yeah, stuff. Yeah. And he must have spent all of his time working on that because he did not make a 3D model of the cop car. Oh wait, dear God is coming right at me! Ah! <laughs> Oh, he put it down. Yeah, he just set it right back down. <laughs> right where it was. Oh, and he disappeared. And he away. <laughs> why? Why do that? Why? Why do the turning when that looks worse than it just being flat would look? Why? Why pick it up in the first place? Why pick it up in why the first is? place? <laughs> like to show uh, Sasquatch's strength. It makes him more intimidating for the rest of the film because you know what he's capable of. <laughs> he can sure pick up a car. What's going on? Sasquatch is shaking the car and the cop gets shook around. You could have easily cut out the part where Sasquatch picks up the car. Oh, I disagree. I think that was very integral to the story. <laughs> Jack, you can't just take sections of a movie and pull them out. The story would make no sense. That's, that's one of the magical things about this movie is, is I, when I watch it, I picture it in the written form. Oh, sure. Like the, the cop car scene, for example, the exterior city street night. And there's a fog. It's dark. Because the cop is, is using his, his spotlight. The cop oh, shines yeah. his spotlight into the darkness. It, it, it vanishes in the misty fog. And the light's not on because they shot it during the day. <laughs> and then, you know, the Bigfoot emerges from the darkness and attacks. You know, and he's writing it, and I'm sure he pictured it completely differently in his head. <laughs> and then we see how it turned out. Look, someone has to stop these hoity-toity women that drive around eating hot dogs <laughs> from living in the suburbs. We know they're rich because they have a chandelier in their car. <laughs> um, and they bought things at a store. Also, women be shopping. Women be shopping and just driving around eating hot dogs. When I think of, of rich white people, I think of them eating hot dogs. No. Yeah. <laughs> well, the chandelier in the car, They had a chandelier seat. in the car, Mike. Hot dogs just says elegance to me. It really does. <laughs> they didn't, she didn't even put any condiments on the thing. It's just a hot dog and a bun. Jay, it's, it's, it's a high quality meat in that hot dog. Oh, okay. It's, it's, it, you don't spoil it with the condiments. Oh, see, I see. You yeah, don't, yeah. You don't know. So it's like putting a, a, like A1 sauce on a really nice steak. Yes, you exactly, just don't do exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> they're, sending, they're sending a message, though, because as she is eating the hot dog, we are treated to footage of the Sasquatch eating a person. Yes, yes. What so are, you, what, so you, what are they you saying? You can see the parallel. Well, 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 you know, nature who consumes things is mad at the socialites, because they also consume things, and that's why nature doesn't like hot dogs. Uh, he's saying the Bigfoot is no worse I, than the fat socialite <laughs> eating a hot dog. <laughs> the, so they're, they're, they're exactly equal. And you know what? Just go throw out more suburbs, fuck it. <laughs> it's all equivalent. <laughs> well, I'd like to talk about, you said earlier the cop car scene was the best attack scene in the movie. Oh, there's so many. But, uh, I, there, yeah. There's lots of attack scenes. The best one, though, in my opinion, is the uh, the fisherman. <laughs> um, and then he rips off the guy's arm and throws it so hard at the other guy that he knocks him unconscious by hitting him in the chest. And then the guy lays there face down in the water for several hours. <laughs> and then 
<laughs> and then he just gets up and he's fine. Uh, you know, that, that reminds me a lot of, uh, of another attack scene. My personal favorite <laughs> attack. Because, like, I think everyone has their own favorite attack yes. scene. True. That's, That's the magic true. of the film. Um, there, there, are, there is a lovely uh, progressive lesbian couple hiking <laughs> through the woods. You're assuming they're lesbians just because the one has a, has, has a bandana on. No, they're both wearing awful jean shorts. Oh, <laughs> Oh, she's got her arm back, though. Oh, good. She's got her arm back. He ripped it off, and then he put it back on her. <laughs> How very considerate of him. Only to rip it off again! <laughs> 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 Only to rip it off again! <laughs> 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 just, just oh, he hit her! He hit her! What? Except for the arm that he started Except with. Except for the arm! So Sasquatch... <laughs> must have went to go grab the arm and put it back only then because he's so vicious <laughs> to rip it off again <laughs> and then he and then he and then he starts eating it and we like cut to later and he has devoured the whole body except for the arm that we saw him start eating yeah wow. it's a commentary <laughs> on the sanctity of marriage on the on the gluttonous <laughs> greedy nature because of that nature. was what arm was that that was a ring finger oh. yeah. yeah think about that okay between a man and a woman That's sasquatch <laughs> does, <laughs> so what you're saying is sasquatch does not approve of gay marriage <laughs> You know my my favorite Bigfoot kill scene. <laughs> I have a favorite Bigfoot kill scene okay. in this. Tell us, Rich. Is uh, there's is man it, is walking. Is it the car the car repair man? <laughs> no, 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 no. There's a man walking around outside in the suburbs. Bossy. So we're thing? we're treated to minutes of a man just walking around saying Muffy. <laughs> We, we Building see, the tension. We, yeah, yeah, then we finally see this. Just like Hitchcock. His, his small poodle, this man's small poodle, Muffy, who Bigfoot picks up. It's <laughs> 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 like it's a piece of paper. <laughs> Guys, no! oh, he broke his stomach bone. <laughs> this is more of Bigfoot's magical powers, which is that before he tears the dog in half, he turns it into a stuffed animal. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> the dog, as a part of nature, was encroaching upon nature, and so Bigfoot had to eat the dog. Okay, okay. Because nature. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, and you know, a, a lot, of, I think, you know, Bigfoot's muddled motivations is actually more speaking to his animalistic nature because yeah, sometimes he'll eat people. Sometimes he'll take a foot and drink the blood out of it. <laughs> uh, but sometimes he'll tie women up in his tarp cave. Yes. <laughs> Chapter four, the tarp cave. <laughs> Bigfoot is taking hostages for some reason. Uh, and they, they apparently can't break free from very thin vines. These very vines. loose vines that they can move their arms all around from. Yeah. Well, he, he needs something to snack on when he's not outside roaming about just eating random people. He has to come home. And when he comes home, he's got someone to eat. It's, yeah, it's like a refrigerator. Yeah. yeah. Bigfoot brought me here hours, days ago. I don't even know anymore. What's happened to you? It's awful. He, he. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. 
And I don't know if that was to imply that there might be some sexual misconduct. Oh. Well, we do know this Sasquatch does have a dong. He does. We discovered that from does. the. We he we does. thought we saw it in the movie, but then when you see the behind the scenes footage, it's it's clear as day. That's a giant Sasquatch we, dick. See, man made tarps, and man put tarps in his cave, which is <laughs> nature. Yes. And because of that, big Sasquatch has to rape <laughs> no the woman of man. <laughs> see. Rich, you're reading the tarp into of man. this wrong. <laughs> man put make a tarps mess. in the caves to tarp over nature. That's why Bigfoot was summoned to go to the suburbs, which is tarping over nature. Oh. The, uh, the, the, the Mexican Indian, she does babble on about something about nature. And, and there, there's, a whole, there's also a, a, an underlying theme about belief. We get to our final test of faith, where, where our uh, Native American Mexican has fallen ill, uh, if you will, El Pollo Hantis. <laughs> <laughs> you thought of that one five oh, minutes ago and you were just waiting. I was waiting right? for it. Yep. And by the way, I think it's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's, thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Uh, his, his faith is put to another test because she is hurt by Bigfoot. Wouldn't it be La Pollo Hantas? <laughs> is this the female? I don't speak Spanish, I'm sorry. L, I think, is masculine. Oh, La Pollo? I, I, yeah, I think it's La, but I, I don't really, I don't, I don't know. Let, let us know. Contact at redlettermedia.com. <laughs> comment below. I'm is sure it, to click like. Below. Is it El Pollo Hantas or La Pollo Hantas? <laughs> <laughs> Please comment below. And click like or subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> Muy bien. <laughs> Muy bien. Muy bueno. We're getting about Fat Cobb's character arc. Yeah, yeah, that's important. His fat Cobb yeah, his has anti character, character arc. arc. <laughs> Why are you so eager to keep this quiet? Jeez, two months ago, when that convict was loose, you called in half of Pope County for help, and now we have a murder out there, and you haven't even known? He doesn't want anyone else to investigate Sasquatch. But it's, it's because it's a personal vendetta for him. I just got out of the police force. The missus and I were recently married. And we decided to live in the peace of nature, not amidst the crime and evil of the city. We have, he, has a, he has his own flashback scene where, where he has a wife. John! <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> They're not even trying! <laughs> no, they are. That's the problem. And so then Fat Cop goes to grab a shotgun and then awkwardly runs up to Bigfoot with the shotgun rather than shooting at him from a distance. And he gets knocked over. Rich, I don't think you know how guns work. <laughs> and so like, and you know, yes, this they're is... close range weapons. <laughs> That's the whole point of them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> This is a very deep work. Much he's he's like he's like uh, Captain Ahab now in Moby Dick. Oh yes. Where the Sasquatch, it's his white whale. Here's the important thing about Fat Cop. Yes. He is the only one with a backstory in this situation. And a motivation. And a motivation. So finally, he confronts Bigfoot. <laughs> Sasquatch gets away, and he and other cop walk away, never to be seen again. Yes. <laughs> yeah, they don't show up for the rest of the movie. They're they're holding holding each other up, and they just disappear into the woods. I, I think they actually have a line that says, "That's all we could do. We out." <laughs> and you think you think they mean just for that that moment, like well, we did what we can do, but we'll get him next time. But there is no next time. This was the third draft. Goddamn it! <laughs> supposed to fix these problems. Maybe he could show up at the end. He could like, like be holding Bigfoot back with a rope so that the Pillsbury newsboy can shoot him with the arrow. <laughs> how, how many minutes? That was the name you came up with 10 <laughs> yeah. minutes ago. I was just waiting to use. Just think, thinking about these names. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> with the shirt, the shirt didn't do many favors. Listen, we've all been there shape wise, but you gotta dress for your body, not the body you want. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Well, the body he wants, if, if that's the body he wants, then he wants to be a 300 pound man. Because it's much too large. His shirt is very large, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I just, I just gotta say though, kudos to the costume designer for Bigfoot. Yeah. I think what attracted me to the production in the first place was the fact that I really wanted to work with Dave Wascavage because I've always wanted to work on a Dave Wascavage film, and um, I'm, I'm, we share a lot of the same sentiments when it comes to Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your favorite part, Rich? It's got to be the tits. <laughs> it's got to be. It's got to be the Bigfoot tits that are just flopping around with these weird fucking looking nipples. <laughs> They're uneven, too, the nibbles. Yeah, what about the, the mismatched colored gloves and the, the head? It's, well, it's, it's yeah. all perfect. The, the face and the hands, uh, which is where his actual skin is showing, are a different color than his, his tits. Well, well we're, we're forgetting the, the most important thing about the whole film. Uh, speaking of Bigfoot, it's <laughs> this, let's chapter five, the sound design. <laughs> oh, yeah, I almost forgot. Yeah. When one could simply find a sound effect of a gorilla mixed with a lion and put them together. You just layer them, slow them down or something. Yeah. Uh, they apparently, Dan, Dave Waskovich, <laughs> he had, he had a, eight seconds of tape left <laughs> on his, on his uh, Fisher Price tape recorder and went, <laughs> and then the tape went out. <laughs> said, I guess that's it. It is a hard cut loop. Yeah. Over and over and over again. And it never stops being funny. <laughs> it's, 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 it's comedic perfection. Achieved on accident, I yes. think. That, that's a, that sums up the whole movie, actually. <laughs> I feel like... <laughs> Don't don't flip off Dave Waskovich. No, this movie's brought us so much joy. It, it has literally brought us joy. That's true. Oh my oh, God! Let me do it. It's right there. <laughs> it's going after Grandma. They couldn't be bothered to just take the door off the hinge. It's a lot of work. You gotta pop on the three pins <laughs> and then take it off the hinge. So, well, I started off hosting. Go for it. So, so. <laughs> so. That's turn. yeah, that was just for fucking with you. So, oh, you're supposed to do what? that. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh, he screwed that up. <laughs> <laughs> so that brings us to the conclusion of this episode of Best of the Worst and our discussion of Suburban Sasquatch, one of our favorite B movies of all time. This is something where you can watch 10 times in every viewing. You will find something new that is very wrong with it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, that opening scene, the opening attack scene after that, when the cops are investigating, I never noticed there's just a rubber hand shoved into the car door. Uh, it shouldn't be any surprise for anybody who knows my writing or my filmmaking style that uh, predominantly what I do when I shoot or when I write is I really want to have an underlying theme. Like, I, I'm, I'm happy that he made it because I get to enjoy it. And what if he learned lessons? We're, we're gonna buy all of his movies. We are gonna watch everything and he's ever done And what if, now. as a filmmaker, he, you know, progresses and, and gets better? I, th I think he's gonna hone his craft and one day he might even win an Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> you are rewarded joke of the day. <laughs> I'll take it. Thank you.